Hello there, and welcome to uh, another tutorial by Jasonian Eskimo here. Hope you're having a good day. And uh, this was actually a request, a request from someone in the comments of one of my earlier videos, and he made a good point that this is something that I'm sure a lot of people want to know how to do. He saw a video of me testing out a cape on this character, and uh, it had a jumping up and down animation. Although I don't have that animation anymore, I do have one of him just kind of doing some stretching. Uh, I need to get better at saving some animation uh, poses and libraries and whatnot. But anyway, he wanted to know how to make this cape that I have going. Um, it's really nice when you're jumping around and moving and doing flips and whatnot. Um, it, this cape is actually really easy and simple to set up. Now, the only thing that I would mention is that as great as it is, you just have to know that in some circumstances it doesn't quite work out for you because if something goes wrong, you don't have much choice to do anything to fix it. And so uh, let's say I take off all the stuff on it that makes it work. And um, get going here. So what you want to do is first create the mesh of your cape. Pretty simple. Um, I, do I even have a... No, I don't even have a subsurf on it. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need one anyway. So you want to create your cape, and um, then after you're done with that, because that's pretty simple, you want to go into this object data of your properties panel, panel over here, and uh, create a vertex vertex group. Man, I am stumbling over my words today. You can see it's a bit late down here. I've had a bit of a long day. But I have a day off tomorrow, so I'm excited, and that's why I'm even doing these. Uh, the vertex groups, you might know what that is, or you might not. Um, basically, what they do is mark a series of vertex, vertices, I mean, or faces, and you can do many sorts of different things with them, and this is just one of them. So what I had done in the past when I made this is I selected some vertices. If I go to the vertex select mode, and I can hit select to show you which ones I chose. If I view just the cape on its own, I'm going to turn on my screencast keys for you. I did that by hitting numpad slash. I chose all the areas that I don't want to move because the cape is flowing like a cloth, and I wanted the this like collar like area to be stiff and uh, the rest of it to be flowing. And so I selected those and I made a vertex group and I called it pinning cape apparently. Uh, you basically just want to throw pinning in there to kind of remind yourself of what the vertex group is for. And I assigned it with 100% of the weight. And so say if you had some curtains or something you would pin the area that is, if you pinned the curtains to the wall, you would pin the areas where the nails are, basically. This is the part that isn't moving, it's pinned. Then after that, you would uh, scroll over to this tab, the physics tab, that's what it's called, and you would add a cloth physics. <laughs> and uh, this looks probably terrifying, don't worry, it's not, because they have a bunch of presets. Do I want this to be made of cotton, denim, leather, rubber, silk? I don't like the cape flying around like a balloon, so I'm going to go ahead and either do rubber or leather. Let's try leather first. And that will change a lot of these settings for you already. And uh, one problem I always had with simulations is I would always forget to change the end frame. So if you go down here, I can change this to like a million or something. and uh, that means that <laughs> this will go on forever, basically, because I'll never have an animation that long. And so next, after you have selected the cloth uh, collision and your preset, uh, go down here and check pinning, and then choose your vertex group that you made. And if I were to hit play, uh, you would see that it's not attached to the character yet, but it is flowing all except for uh, those areas that I had pinned. So on the collar uh, and yeah pretty much you get the idea there. 
And then uh, all you have left to do is attach it to the person. And I just recorded a tutorial uh, earlier. And for me in real life, it was probably about three minutes ago on how to connect these sorts of things. What I'm going to do is open the rig back up for my character. And uh, I'm going to, with the cape selected, am I forgetting something here? I'll get back to that. With the cape selected, I'm going, I'm going to go to the object data panel. No, I'm going to go to the constraints panel. Sorry about that. Whoops. And in the constraints panel, I'm going to give it a child of modifier constraint sort of thing. Whatever you feel like calling it. And this basically gives you the option to have an object be parented to something, but with a lot more options. Such as uh, how it copies the location, rotation, and scale, and whatnot. And anyway, I'm going to choose the armature for this character. And then choose the bone. Let's go for probably chest. And you'll see the thing goes flying off in the distance. So just hit select or set inverse and it'll pop right back. Don't really know why it does that. I mean, if you want it to be off in the distance, you can hit clear inverse, but you want set inverse. And I believe this bone is called the chest. Yes, it is. Haven't used the rig in a while. And uh, that would mean that if this is set to one, every time that the chest moves, this should also follow along with it. So now as the character moves, the cape falls down. And then lastly, what you want to do, I didn't undo this, so it's not as easy as you might think. The character, or the clothes of my character at least, maybe even the skin as well. Uh, you want to select those and give it a collision physics in here. So if I didn't have that on, the cape would go straight through him as it falls down. Just fly right through them like that, and that, that looked really odd. And so, you want to add a collision to the actual character that's wearing this cape, and uh, that's pretty much all you have to do. You don't have to change the settings at all, really. Then, we're going to go back to the cape and then choose self collision. That means that if the cape were to fold over sideways, it wouldn't go through itself, and you can choose the quality of how well it does that, or the distance of uh, how far away it'll collide. And uh, you also have some other options. Uh, I believe there's like a high quality cloth option somewhere. Sometimes it's nice to click that, but uh, it's not completely necessary. And I believe that would be all for how to do this. That is how to get your cape going. Uh, anything additional I would add is on the same layer as the cape you can go to these force fields and add something like wind and I'm gonna go ahead and scale it on the Z to make it stronger I'm going to rotate it towards him and I spent a long time a long time ago to uh, figure out why this wasn't working but you need to put this on the same layer as the cape if it's not um, and then once that is there, um, it should make the cape go flowy and fly through the air. But perhaps it's not strong enough. Did I just add an empty or is this actually doing something? Oh, I have to scroll up. Now let's make the strength incredibly high just to watch it work. Whee! It's very windy. And what I've also done in the past is put the cloth simulation on his hair. But uh, I think I had recently found something much better to do, which is to make this sort of thing where this... Yeah, I, I, that's really complicated. <laughs> I'm not going to waste 20 minutes of this video to try and explain that. Basically, the movement of that controls how the hair moves. And as the rig moves, uh, it'll animate that, and then I go in the dope sheet and then offset the frame so that when he moves, uh, this goes the other way for a moment. And yeah, that is called uh, a 
it's shape key animation. You can look up uh, David Ward's video on facial rigs over on Blender Cookie, and he'll show you a lot of how to do that. Anyway, sorry for wasting your time there. Um, I hope this helped any of you. Um, that's about all I have to say. That's how to make a cape. And you can do many other things with it as well. Hope you have a good day, and thanks for stopping by.